field and Vanover with Dunn will be back. Dunn is a freshman out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Vanover, you probably know a lot about because he is exciting. High clock nails it. He won't bring that one back. He runs him all the way to the back of the end zone. Florida State will start at the 20, and here are the first half numbers. Well, they've both had 33 plays. Uh, total plays are the same, uh, a little bit different on the scoreboard. Total yardage, uh, 233 for FSU, 117. Uh, time of possession big in the, in the side of uh, Kansas, but uh, the one turnover turned into a touchdown that uh, uh, but Kansas is uh, short on the scoreboard. Right now, however, the pressure is on the Kansas defense because if Florida State just goes bopping on down the field and sticks it in the end zone, uh, I mean, this, this party is liable to get a little quiet. Ward comes out having uh, gone 13 for 18 in the first half with 136 yards. Stone balls that should have been and could have been certainly intercepted. Sean Jackson could have gone down behind the line of scrimmage there. Jayhawks hit him, but they don't take him down. He got away from Daryl Jones. Looked like the big sophomore out of Wichita was going to get a sack, or get, at least to get him behind the line of scrimmage, not a sack, but he couldn't hold him. So a gain of a yard for Sean Jackson, and it's second down and nine for the Seminoles. On a day in which it's well over 120 degrees down on the field. But so far, no cramps, no trouble with it. The trainer's going to special diets, lots of liquids. They're handling their athletes very well. Pass down the middle, and the, that one's been there all day long. Kez McCorvey, one more time. McCorvey, four catches and 82 yards so far in the ball game. And there hadn't been a Kansas Jayhawk within five yards of him when he's run that pattern down in the middle. First down, the ball just short of the 42 out of the shotgun. The Knowles. Goes for Fryer. Good. Penalty flag. Back around the line of scrimmage. You may have a hold coming up right here. Gerald McBurrows was over there with Fryer. So let's see about Al Hines here and see what the call is. It's against the Seminoles. The offensive leaders for Florida State in the first half reflected here. Illegal use of the hands on the offense. Repeat Charlie first Ward, down. 13 of 18. Uh, Jackson threw that one pass from the halfback position. Jackson also led him in rushing. Vanover had four to lead the receivers. Florida State had eight penalties for a total of 37 yards in that first half, and five of them came in that uh, ill-fated uh, possession of Kansas down inside the Seminoles' 10, where they failed to score on ten, running 10 plays. Five counted, and five were penalty plays. First down, and oh my goodness, Big Chris Mamalonga trying to anticipate, went through and hit Charlie Ward hard, drawing all of the laundry in the house and uh, almost starting a riot because he went through there and bought Ward pretty good. 72, right in the middle of your screen. I think old Chris said, well, I'm here. I might as well do something. Yeah, well, you know, that can go either way. Uh, yep. Florida State, uh, if Mal Malanga had may have, may, uh, I'm not saying he has been, but if he's been mouthing off, talking all day, I'm going to get you that kind of thing. Uh, maybe Florida State uh, thinks he's doing something. But uh, on the other side, you know, sometimes you can just be pulled off and just jump, and he's the closest one there, and you just run into him. Well, he's, he sort of shook his head like, uh, sorry you did it. He was just trying to anticipate. And uh, though a couple of Seminoles grabbed a hold of him, it uh, really didn't get all that serious. So it'll be a first down on the penalty up at the 45-yard line for Florida State, and Charlie is none the worse for wear. But there is no question that this man is their meal ticket if they're going to go anywhere as far as national championships this year. That ball is thrown to the sidelines and is thrown right through the arms of Robert Vaughn, 38. So that is the fourth ball thrown in this ball game by Charlie Ward. The receiver and hangs around. This is Blevins, 28. Double zone coverage on the outside, and it seems to give Charlie a little bit of problem today. 
Little play action. The pass goes down the middle. It's good to McCovey again. And again, that uh, uh, pass play down the middle is, is there. And uh, Charlie Ward uh, has, has got a good horse. He's going to ride him. It's first down at the 30-yard line. trying to watch the Kansas defense here and see something new and I really don't see anything new. McCorvey now with five catches and 107 yards. Little quick drop, little quick pop. All thrown hard. He goes right through the hands of, uh, of uh, Omar Ellison, number 30, who is a wide receiver, a junior. Say you're, you're looking for something new, Keith. Uh, Kansas uh, up. When when Charlie Ward sees something like this, nothing in the middle of the field, you know they're going to blitz. Here, this linebacker's coming, and this linebacker's coming. And what he does is he sees it and says, "All right, if you're sending six guys, I can get one on one on the outside. If he catches that ball and breaks the tackle, it could be a big play." So, some blitzing, a little bit different for Kansas. On second and ten, here's Jackson. Good blocking on the right side. Touchdown, Sean Jackson. You got some great blocking on this play. The fullback is going to get a block, and then the strong guard right there. That's Floyd, 44, and 69 was McNeil, both of them with good blocks. And Keith, when you're tired, Defensively for Kansas, sometimes you don't fight off the block or make the effort to get around it. You just go up and get you let yourself get blocked, and that's what happened. And that was a perfectly executed play. Scott Bentley is in for the try. Right down the highway. So the youngster from Colorado who came to Tallahassee to play his football as it bore, and uh, the Seminoles lead it 28 to nothing. William Floyd there along with him. He just scored the touchdown. It helps. I tell you, a day like this, uh, playing football at the Meadowlands in New Jersey today would be about like pulling fodder in the bottomlands. I huh? guarantee you that an <laughs> average player, average weighted player, Keith, will lose 10, 12 pounds uh, today. To at put it least. all back, it's all fluid, but. Uh... Bentley's kickoff, high and deep. Way back there. He really gets it airborne, doesn't he? Wendy's kickoff classic being brought to you by Wendy's old fashioned hamburgers. Derek Brooks. It seems he has injured an ankle, but he is also suffering from terrible heat fatigue. They are going to try and spell him as often as they can during these series of downs in the second half. But he's still out there right now playing. They just don't know how long he can stand it. Oh, I understand it. They're having trouble with uh, his ankles and knees this year, aren't you? That's uh, George White carrying the ball for the Jayhawks, turning around the corner. And George at 5'10 and 170. Get some yardage on the play. Jack, won't the producer let you take off your jacket? Is that <laughs> Keith, mean old man? It's better always, Keith, to look marvelous than to feel marvelous. <laughs> Remember that. Oh, okay. <laughs> who, who said you look marvelous? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, if Brooks is not feeling well, I don't know why he's in there. Of course, sometimes it's tough to get these kids out of there. Second down and six for Kansas. From the 24. Now, Fred Thomas didn't have any choice that time. He had to get rid of it because Derek Alexander, number 90, was just eating him up. A big uh, sophomore from Jacksonville is quick, isn't he? Derek Alexander is relentless. Uh, talking with the uh, model, he says he may be their best defensive lineman right here. Number 90. Trying to clear the telestrator for you. Number 90, nobody blocks him. That's, you know, that's when you know uh, luck is on your side when uh, nobody uh, comes over to block you. Number 84 is Rodney Harris. He hasn't seen the ball much today. He's the 6'6 wide out. Fred Thomas trying to throw the ball. Can't get it away. Derek Alexander gets him again. So they're becoming uh, almost companionable back there. I mean, they're really getting acquainted. Down and his third kick of the day was a 35-yard. Well, Sawyer is dangerous. Uh, 
everywhere you look on this FSU team, they have got the guys to make big plays. Pressure at that time. Dan does a pretty good acting job, but no call on it. Sawyer looking around for a little crack here and there. There's a penalty flag thrown. Probably got a hole coming up against Florida State. I think number 43 got hooked up down there and it drew the flag. Tomorrow night, James Bond is back in the living daylights. Timothy Dalton starring in the ABC Sunday night movie. Tomorrow at a special time, 8.30, 7.30 Central. Rick Dunn, he's that freshman from Baton Rouge. And boy, he came in a whisker of tearing it loose and going for a TD. And so that second unit, can look at third appearance of the ball <laughs> game, and they're having more fun than anybody. Bowden was... Bowden was just beside himself. It's a true freshman. He's 5'9 and 165 pounds. And he was saying, you know, this kid is something else. He's, just, he's got it. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, this kid has got it. He can be exciting. And he is a, he was a, um, he was a quarterback in high school. He ain't over 1,000 yards last year as a quarterback. So after you get through with that misery, here comes Charlie Ward and company. And Charlie threw that ball just a little bit behind Tamarick Vanover, and he does not reel it in. That second group has been on the play on the field three times yep. had three plays. <laughs> no wonder they look good. They're yeah. all fresh. Huh? They're fresh, fresh legs. Next week, an assortment of action for you, and uh, some of you might be interested in the pay-per-view. Yes, you can see Stanford, Washington, if you're interested in pay-per-view, just as you could any of the other games being covered by ABC. That ball is thrown low and underneath the reaching hands of Marquette Smith. Marquette Smith has been on that Stampeder uh, group, but uh, that last time you will have uh, one of those games in your area. Obviously on your ABC station. All right, we've got a timeout called, and this, this story is too good to pass up. You know the frustration of Bobby Bowden and no national championships. This is the third time that Florida State has come out preseason number one, and Miami has beaten them both times. So now, here's the story. Well, that was one that was told on me. We had a roast in Birmingham uh, last year, and, and my Terry Bowden was on the, he was one of the roasties. And then uh, Dan Sheridan was there, and Tim Brando. And one of those guys told that story about Terry and Tommy supposedly dying and trying to go to heaven, and St. Pete saying, your name's not on the list. So he had to catch an elevator and go down to the bad place. And they'd get off, and it wasn't, wasn't on fire. All they saw was icicles hanging from the ceiling, ice everywhere. And Terry said, gee, Daddy must have finally won a national championship. <laughs> <laughs> he, was in, he was in rare form yesterday. Yes, he was. Well, hey, we got another part of the interview about what they're doing here. How come they came up here? We'll run that for you. He's very frank and blunt about it. Here the last times he was ranked number one preseason in 88. They finished third in 91. He finished fourth. The last six years, they have finished no worse than fourth in the nation. Pretty impressive. That's the AP rank you see there. Ward back. Charlie lets it go. And it's incomplete. That was intended for Matt Pryor. A senior from Live Aid, Florida. And so they get it up. It looked like they're going to do something with it. And then all of a sudden you get a little penalty, and now they're going to have to give it away on a punt. And Sean Liss in for only his sure. second punt of the day. You think he's going to punt it. If they got any tricks up his sleeve in which he is known for, this is a great chance yeah, in, a good inside the 50. Yep, good place to do it. He's leading 28 to nothing, and he lets him punt. High drifting punt. That first kick, he hit it down there about the five yard line and just like a nine iron, just stuck it in the ground. But that one goes into the end zone and it'll come out for the 20. 28 nothing Seminole. Two days to go by blimp from here to Washington, D.C. Two days. You think Emmett Smith will be there? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. George White carries the football and uh, run down by Derek Brooks. So Brooks, who's gimpy and tired, still flying around out there. Looks pretty good to me. Mm, he, he doesn't look like he's too lame. Does he was he? a defensive a couple of years ago, three years ago. He was the defensive player, high school defensive player of the year. 
That same year, they also got the Offensive Player of the Year in Marquette Smith. So Florida State does have some talent. Ball is at the 17-yard line, second down and 13. Fred Thomas throws incomplete, throwing into the sideline. Let's go to Jack Aroot. And Keith, I want to introduce you to Charlie Ward, the original Charlie Ward, Charles Ward Sr. Charles, tell us about how Charlie got involved in sports. Well, uh, around the house, used to take things and throw them and punt and kick and, and in, in the neighborhood, used to throw our uh, punt and knock out people windows in the neighborhood. So uh, naturally, he is an athlete. Word has it that you and his mom are the people that keep his feet firmly planted on the ground. How important is that to you? Well, both of us, all of us trying to keep it together. Long, long we put God in that, too. We have to have God in our lives, and we're trying to raise him as a family. Keith, we're going to ask him one more question after this play. All right. Third down. Fred Thomas gets it away to George White. White wiggling around up the middle of the field is going to stop just short of the 30, and that's just short of a first down. And once again, Derek Brooks is part of it. Mac Knight brought him down, really, to stop him short of his first down. So again, Jack. Mr. Ward, a lot of talk about being drafted, Charlie being drafted by the NFL and the NBA. Who would you prefer to see him play for? I have no decision on that. That's going to be his decision. Whatever he decides, that's what we take. That's what we look at. Let him decide, and then whatever he decides, then we'll, we'll back him. Keith, be assured the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree in this family. Got you. That's... Uh... Charlie's a good young man as you take a look at Eikhoff, and uh, you're exactly look at this. two school teachers. You think they might uh, gamble here? No. No, they don't. Eikhoff got it out, didn't get much of it. I thought for a second we might see a little short punt going there with the ball snapped to somebody up front. But it doesn't happen, and Eikhoff comes off after a relatively poor kick of only 27 yards. Getting back to Charlie Ward, though, uh, Keith, and we had a nice chance to chat with him yesterday. Uh, a, a, a fine young man, outstanding. All the things that are happening to him are going to happen to him this year. He's got his head screw, screwed on the straight. Uh, his parents, uh, both uh, teachers, uh, really have raised this young man in a, in a way that they can be proud of and everybody at Florida State can be proud of. Here comes that bunch. They're back out there. <laughs> all those fresh legs and everything. Here they go. That's Warwick Dunn, and Kansas uh, grabs him by the coat tail this time and handles him at the 46-yard line. I asked Bobby Bowden yesterday in talking to him if he'd ever seen anybody with better vision on the field than Charlie Ward. Here's the coach's answer. I put him in the class with Tarkington. I put him in the class with Staubach. I, I put him in the class with that type of a quarterback. I've never had one. I've never been around one, you know, that could, could, could see and feel the things that he feels. William Floyd carrying there as the Ward group comes back. The first unit comes back on the field. You know, I wore glasses. That's why he never mentioned me on that decision. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell you what, Bob Gracie. <laughs> if you were playing right now and you had that hash mark out that far out in the middle of the field, two steps at quarterbacks in the middle of the field, you'd be illegal. <laughs>